This is off planet radio. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer. Randy is still on his little sabbatical. This is the last, this is the last randy list show for a while, and I have uh, an awesome co-host with me. But before we get to that, I just want to thank all the patrons once again. Um, we're having an awesome time with that, and you guys are making all of this possible. For those of you who haven't joined us over there yet, go over and check out patreon.com uh, forward slash off planet media. We are creating a really awesome community. We're having great... Uh, Okay, I have to stop here for a second. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> Somebody just logged in from another device, and this creates a recording problem sometimes, so I'm trying to figure out how to deal with it. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there. Sorry, guys. Um, sometimes Randy logs in accidentally when he goes on Facebook. My apologies. <laughs> uh, so, um, patreon.com forward slash off planet media. We're having awesome group chats. We're doing really cool stuff over there. Come over and check us out. And um, now we will get on with the show. My co-host today is the one and only Jeff Gates. We are going to uh, just kind of take the temperature of what's going on everywhere. We're going to decode DeSantis. We're going to walk away. We're going <laughs> to... I do want to chat about that real quick. This is all of a sudden there's this hashtag walk away thing. Robert Phoenix and I were chatting about this this morning. I want to kind of get your sort of take on some of this real fast. But we're just going to kind of have one of our usual chats. And uh, hopefully you guys will all enjoy it. So Jeff Gates, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Thanks for being with me. Thank you, thank you. So, one of our ongoing chats, I'm just going to launch, um, is back in November of 17, uh, Ben dropped this little video about Andrew DeSantis and Bitcoin. And uh, ever since that, uh, watching that, um, I knew there were strings to pull and he has since done two more interviews or podcasts and nobody's really looking at him as, as far as our uh, alternative media, whatnot groups and the pieces that he may add to off planet, Sonia Barrett, Cliff high, Raz Ben. I mean, yeah, Catherine Austin fits um, the list goes on. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to just kind of touch base with this because there's still a whole fear the AI narrative, fear Bitcoin, and there's huge pieces to DeSantis that we chat about. Um, so back in November, uh, we all had this intuitive knowing that Bitcoin, the blockchain, is something just real quick. Real quick, yep. for one second. For those of us, because we're assuming that everybody knows who Andrew DeSantis is at this point, so we've mentioned it a few times. Real quick, quickly, will you just let people know who Andrew DeSantis is and, and sort of how you came, came across him and why you decided to start uh, sharing his information with, with me and with uh, some other people? So he's, right, he's a 25-year-old kid that seems to have uh, he came out of Stanford, which is super interesting. Mm -hmm. um, in in your uh, you know perception of what Stanford is, mm -hmm. um, he uh, ran Bitcoin or owns Bitcoin Magazine, and he's some to some extent a, a coder. That when you look at the Twitter crypto Twitter feeds, he's highly regarded. Um, as he speaks in multi-dimensional layers, and it's fascinating that when we, Danny and Ben, and you know all of us were watching his videos, uh, Randy immediately knew, oh my God, this guy is a metaphysician, and he does he know it or does he not know it? Because when he's speaking, he speaks in layers, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, the hosts have no idea those layers, what he's talking about. Um, 
because they're all they're worried about Bitcoin from a financial standpoint, and they're right. missing the point. Yes, right? they're so, they're looking at the money monster narrative, and whatever the consensus of programming around Bitcoin is, what they're fixated on, they have no idea of this whole uh, another layer that's riding on top of it. So that's kind of my take on DeSantis. Um, I'm kind of nervous talking about it because I know I don't grasp all of it. And forgive me, <laughs> Andrew, if you hear this, that I'm just trying to keep keep up and understand because there's there's a bigger conversation that I just, we heard a lot of that metadata layer that uh, you're speaking, um, and uh, this is just a conversation about so far what I've uh, integrated. So, so back in the November, uh, kind of we as a group, those deep immersions and the Bitcoin uh, podcasts that were put out, it was like the scary thing. Um, why do we have to have mining rings? rigs all over the planet consuming electricity and right. and what are these whizzing bit mining rings doing metaphysically to the planet or us or um and one of the tells of that is one of the mining rigs in somewhere in the east coast i forgot the state was out of tune frequency wise and there was a news article that the uh, FCC or the local authorities figured out exactly where that mining rig was and sh and busted down the door and and shut it down because it was mistuned. So clearly, if the mining rig uh, is whizzing about, it's doing something frequency yeah. wise. I was going to say that sounds like when a holistic doctor goes off the plantation and they raid their office or. When yeah. So, yeah, so that's very that that's very interesting. So yeah. so is it are these mining rigs that I mean wow okay so just the way you said that are these mining rigs part of what's holding in a frequency band that is keeping people psychologically imprisoned or oppressed and if one sort of goes off and starts doing something else do they know the power of it you know all these frequencies can be good or used for good or used for bad right the frequency is just a frequency it's what it's applied to and how it's used and where it's directed and aimed at all that kind of stuff if something starts to wow i mean like i just you know it, it it's it, it's like any of this stuff any of this other stuff like we have to get over this idea that something is good or bad right. <laughs> and, and 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 we yeah wow okay so go ahead yeah. i'm sorry to interrupt no 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 so um uh, so we had a lot of questions at that. There was a lot of uh, private conversations and, and just trying to dig into that. And nobody except for the one fella, remember he, I forgot his name. He was on Off Planet. Ben just asked about him. He did a, the metaphysics uh, of Bitcoin. So seven, seven Bomar. So yeah, yes. seven Bomars come up in our... I, I've liked seven Bomar for many years. Uh, I, 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 I like him. Um, I have to say that Seven Bomar's Metaphysics of Bitcoin video was disappointing. I didn't feel like yeah. he ever actually got to anything. And mm -hmm. I felt like like it, 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 Seven and, and Seven, I've never met you, but we'd love to have you back on the show sometime. And, and if, you know, if you hear this, I'm, I'm a huge fan of you and, and of your work. But sometimes I feel like with some of the videos and some of the stuff that he puts out, he has an, like an online university that has a lot of information that's very interesting. And I've gleaned a lot of information from that. But sometimes with some of these videos and interviews and things like that, like the, from the, the way they're titled in the beginning, it feels like there's going to be some sort of really interesting revelation and then there's not much. I don't know if that's just because, you know, he's trying to pace things out, at, like, like, you know, put things out at a pace he thinks people can, can understand them or, or if, I don't know what's going on with that, you know, because I know he, I know he knows what he's talking about. I know he has good information. And I'm, my whole thing is at this point, just whatever you got, drop it. You know what I mean? Like drop it and, and, and let people sort of go their own way with it and whatever. Um, yep. But, uh, you know, there, there, he was the only other person that I heard address other than us in the way we were talking about it with some of it, that there is a metaphysics to the, and just so everyone knows, 
Um, I'm sure people do know this. I have a no interest in, in money. I don't really care about money or making a lot of money with Bitcoin. And, and when we started all these conversations about Bitcoin, I was fairly anti because I saw people, you know, it's a turnoff to me when I see people getting really super obsessed with money and whatever. But some of the things that um, Jeff brought up and some of the things even that came up in the very contentious sort of conversation we had with Cliff and Danny um, did make me curious about the psychological aspects of this and then the metaphysical aspects. And then, you know, I really started looking at some of this DeSantis stuff. And, you know, for me, it became, okay, this is interesting. And I'm going to pay attention, not because I'm uh, wanting to get rich quick or anything like that, but because I feel like there's something here for us to learn about our system. I start when Randy remote viewed the mechanized DNA strands and I started to listen to the way DeSantis was talking about it. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a second. This is a chance for us to understand the reality that we're in. And so I started taking a closer look at it. And um, I, at this point, have a very neutral position on it. Like I don't, I'm not pro, I'm not anti. My positions on what I think are important in life haven't changed at all. I'm looking at, at this through the lens of like, uh, the, way, the way people like to describe our reality as like a simulation, right? Or like when they use, um, uh, computer kind of terms to describe metaphysical things. That's what I'm looking at this as. This is a, a chance to, this is something that has like a lingo that can help us to understand our reality. And so it is from that angle that, that I come at this with. And then I've actually come to learn that you really do too, even though you have, you know, managed to make profit for yourself. Um, I have, even though, I mean, there's nothing special or interesting or good going on with cryptocurrency right now financially. And I haven't heard, seen or heard you freak out about that, which tells me that you're just, you're along for the ride. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the right way to be sort of looking at this. Otherwise I probably wouldn't even be having this conversation with you about this at this point. Yep. So, and, yeah. and I, I'll, I want to go down that rabbit hole uh, here shortly because okay. there is so much to pay attention to uh, other than the money monster aspect. And, and to me, um, the money monster aspect is uh, Sonia Barrett's default mode. I'm not interested in the default mode of this Bitcoin thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to a whole nother level. He's not saying it's her default mode. He's, he's saying it's the default mode she speaks about when she talks yeah. about how the simulation or how the game works. Yes. Sorry. Yes. To yes. be clear. So, <laughs> not so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So um, the, the other interesting thing thing about DeSantis initially is man we had uh, I'll speak for we we had this gut feeling and intuition that oh my god this kid is moving in and out of the hidden hyperspace dimensions um you know the fringe the ultra plus the tomorrowland there's something going on uh that he either knows about or he's actively doing yeah um so and that relates to uh, this data source RAS Ben's concept of 5D, being able to move in and out of dimensions effortlessly. And, and that's, you know, can be minimized down to just the default mode or the matrix or becoming the game in Sonia's uh, view of reality. Um, and then, you know, you hit upon it, the, that last point of, man, if you really understand what the blockchain is, uh, you'll get keys to understanding this construct. And Randy just had this Jason fellow on that really highlighted for me this this fear of AI that all these programs and agendas that are running around like, oh, AI is going to be more powerful and kill off humanity. I am really coming to the perception that's all a false narrative and a limited hangout because technology is just magic made flesh, as Jason put that. That's a quote of somebody. But, um, you know, back to the, the simulation or the construct or the, the reality that we're in, it, it's all magic. It's all really, it has an intelligence that, that there's pieces to the puzzle that like even Chris and Cherie just uh, did a journey on to, you know, metaphysically go to the control panel. 
And once you start understanding that uh, some people are just really attached to the narrative that this is organic and the only organic in the earth. But if you kind of drop that narrative or that belief that organic or analog is only good and digital is all bad, I'm, I'm just not tied to that. No, fight. it's the, and it's, so I like the way that Sonia describes technology and she says that techno uh, means art. Right. And to me, of course, that resonated with me in a very special way because, you know, one of the prime mode, prime ways that I do my creative and artistic thinking and, and expression is with music that's called techno. Right. And a lot of people see it as some sort of like uh, technological in the, the bad sense, you know, uh, weird, you know, mechanical frequency from the, you know, transhumanist future that's trying to, and I, that's not what it is at all to me. I, I completely understand the history of it and I know what it feels like to be inside of it. And it is, it's art. It's what you create, it's, it's, it's what you create of it. And so technology being knowledge of art, right? And so I see the most artistic expression being the interplay of organic and, and, and analog and, uh, um, you know, uh, what, the, what was the word you just said? Technology, you know what I mean? Like, techno yeah. And technology as we think of it, like machines and whatever, like, you know, if you, for anybody who's ever had a psychedelic experience um, on, uh, on natural stuff, I'm not talking about on stuff created in a lab, on natural stuff, which is either, depending on what we're in, is either some kind of analog or some kind of organic, right? There is technology there. There's no doubt. It's it's not it's not tech. It's not these little teeny, tiny chips and bolts and screws that are just gray. It's colorful. It lights up. It has bioluminescence and whatever. But there's no doubt about the fact that it's what we consider to be, you know, uh, you know, s uh, some form of machine type technology. And so, um, yeah, like I think this whole it's a huge fight um, to to sort of divide and get people worried and str and stratify and layer and. And you know this whole fear, like with the ta with about the uh, uh, AI takeover. Like I, you know, we were all kind of thinking about that and worrying about that. But I know just from um, my experience in the last um, couple of uh, couple of months, um, I've been you know really stepping away from a lot of the technology, um, and mm -hmm. and. Um, the things that are bothering me have nothing to do with technology. You know, when I say bothering me, I don't mean necessarily even bad, right? But the things that are like what I'm worried about and what I'm thinking about have really almost nothing to do with technology. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, if there is an AI takeover happening, it's not doing a very good job because it's not reaching itself off of the screen and out into my world and, and sucking me back in in a way that is uh, unavoidable. Um, mm -hmm you know, which isn't that what it would be doing if that, if, if you know what I mean? Like, I, at least that's my, my th thought. Now, I mean, there is, and we can get into this a little bit later. Um, I do want to bring up what's going on with Tracy Twyman. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there is, like, the, you know, the, like there is, the internet is definitely compromised. There's no question about that, right? The mm -hmm. technology is definitely compromised. Um, but, you know, so, our continued dive into it and reliance on it for things that it's not necessary for can lead us to be pulled in and controlled by something that some of us might think of as being AI because it's, you know, then it is on a certain level, it's algorithmically driven, but like at any choice, like at any point, you know, you can stand up and walk away from the computer and, you know, start to, you know, and I'm not saying that nothing ever reaches out from the computer life, because obviously at this point, almost everybody we know is somebody we met on the computer, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. if we've developed any level of um, discernment at all, then we, which I think those in our community have, to be able to tell sort of, you know, who is, um, I'd rather use the term holistic than organic or, or, or analog, who is a whole, who is, who's, who's, who's coming from a holistic space, um, you know, then there's ways you can con communicate and connect with each other to know whether this person is driving some sort of like programmed agenda or not. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so the power to understand, the power to deal with, like we haven't, we, like we still have um, 
common sense <laughs> if we choose to access it. You know what I mean? Like it, it isn't, um, and we have like, but the common sense, common sense, the use of common sense requires something that Jeff and I were talking about right before we started recording, which was the ability to sit with something even when it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. not trying to fix it and change it right away. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm, okay. I'm kind of stuff there. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's so many, uh, I tried to do a little cheat sheet of notes, but there's just no way because let's just try and unpack whatever comes up. Okay. So really, um, if, if I had a direct line to Cliff High and Catherine Austin Fitz in a way that uh, I could talk, speak at them and hook them into this conversation, it is, you got to look. Hint, hint, hint. Yeah, <laughs> you you got to look at this Andrew DeSantis because he's taken Bitcoin that, you know, as Cliff Cliff has only alluded or uh, verbalized that it's just uh, a, a chain of transactions on a ledger. And I, I knew that was um, not an expansive view of it. And then DeSantis's data landed in our laps. So DeSantis has created DEOS, deos.org and it is a decentralized operating system that rides on top of bitcoin and it does it in a way that is it's a quantum computer it um one of the tweets that he had was he succeeded in uh compacting uh one terabyte of data down to point oh oh Oh, one megabytes. So even though on the Bitcoin blockchain, there's only so many K per block or, or transaction, he's figured out how to put data in there that nobody is looking at. And when Randy remote viewed the, the blockchain and he said, hey man, all I see is mechanized DNA, that was the key for me. Mm -hmm. So when I, let's go back to human DNA. I started looking at DNA on Wikipedia. Because I'm just not, I, I don't know where to even start on DNA. Um, but when you start to look at it, it's not just this two strand. Um, we know metaphysically that it's whatever, 23 strands. We can't see it. We can't measure it. Uh, it's quantumly entangled with uh, other humans, other, uh, you know, um, what do you call them, our aspects, uh, our fractal incarnation. Cells. Fractal yeah. cells, yeah, incarnation. Yeah. I mean, uh, the human DNA is just amazing. And there's RNA and mitochondrial DNA and ATP, and it just is a incredible deep dive of our human body makeup. And so all of a sudden, this, this blockchain manifested in 2008, and it, it's like that base layer of a ledger, meaning to me, my interpretation of human DNA is there's, you know, the official reality is you have two strands and it's your genes and it does things and there's a whole bunch of junk in it. When you start to unravel it, um, it is an endless storage thing. And, you know, I can speak to my experience with holographic kinetics. If you go start looking at your past and your past lives and your genetic heritage, you start to see that all your experiences are stored somehow in your DNA. And you can go back to, with some assistance or other modalities or whatever, go back and look at what happened at that time. And if there's any trauma online, you can undo it and replace it with a, a beneficial memory and undo any stuck energy. So, uh, and, and Andrew would call that a replay attack, um, where you replay something 
and you you make it have a, a different outcome. So I do with that that with clients all the time. I replay attack their memories, whether it's handed down through genetic heritage or their past lives, because there's something about our DNA that holds stuff that we just don't understand mm-hmm. and kind of do understand, but you can, you can do things with it. So the Bitcoin blockchain manifests. And then my question is, okay, is Dios the layer of metaphysics on the blockchain? Has, is he the facilitator of this? Because when he's talking about, if you look at a blockchain and how th- hundreds of thousands of millions of copies of it are all over the planet, and you keep, through this conversation, you keep applying it to what DNA is. Mm-hmm. Well, every cell in my body has DNA and it's the exact copy. It has the exact memories stored in it, the, you know, exact. They're all synced up. So, that, well, that's why they want everyone's DNA also, because they know what a library of information it is. Even to just get one little cell, so, they'll, they'll take your cigarette butt or your soda can or whatever. Yep. And they can create, a, 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 you know, what, all sorts of stuff with that. Yeah. So in essence, then they have your private key. And you know what I just thought? They have this CRISPR technology, which is about re-editing the DNA. So if they steal your DNA and they re-edit one, like, this is the question. If they steal one of your cells, right? And they go, they use that to go ahead and rewrite that DNA. Does that rewrite the DNA for the rest of your body? And is that why they're so interested in it? Because you're quantumly entangled with it. Yeah, wow. So- now they would have to have the stronger force to make that sync work, but mm-hmm. clearly, you know, maybe they're working on it or clearly that's what's going on. That's the idea, the, the point there. I they're, mean, and you can get into the whole uh, Britney Spears cloning thing and all the, you know, uh, our DNA is quantumly entangled and, yeah. and shit gets weird really quick on yeah. all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Just, um, so if you're, you're just looking at the blockchain as just the money monster, uh, financial transaction thing, you're missing the boat in my opinion. Um, and I don't consider it, I'll just be candid. I don't consider any of this, the negative agenda. Um, I, if, if I could get Cliff to download the, oh, it's open source and take a peek at what this quantum computer that's layered on top of the blockchain now um, and just get some feedback because I don't, I'm not a coder. I can't, I can't figure this out at the, at this time. Um, And he's the only one that I know that could. So that's just a a poke. Yeah. Um, (laughs) uh, We're poking Cliff. (laughs) um, Cause there's, there's something to that. And, it, it, you know, I'd like to attach the PDFs of all the DeSantis interviews, the transcripts, because, you know, it's whatever, six hours worth of stuff. Um, but there's just gems in there. This kid knows something. He is doing something. And, you know, if you relate it to, okay, there's a, the attack on our DNA through food and EMF and radio and all this stuff, Bitcoin is being attacked in the same way. You you think this is a way of rewriting history? I think it, you know how we were talking about how, um, change the past, change the future. Well, you know that the, your, your base and your tether, what we were calling your Mm -hmm. ground. Right. 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 So like you're like, when I, go into visionary space like i have a tether and i have a disc the disc is my life force like like the the disc is me but like the tether is like what attaches keeps me grounded and then connects me to my highest self you need to be connected to both and then that sort of disc is like is the me now like my own life force my own energy what i'm creating and you can sort of move it up and around but like you need to you're you know you need to always sort of see that you're tethered to both. I mean, I'm using up and down because that's easier, but sometimes it can be this way too. It can be right mm-hmm. and left or whatever, but you know, you need to be like, it is important that we be anchored to 
Anchor. Like, anchored, like tethered to who we were at the very beginning and connected to our highest self, which the two are sort of the same thing, but they seem to be, because of the way we understand time, they seem to be here and there or now and then, right? And the truth is it's probably a superposition in a strange loop. But because <laughs> we think of things as, as linear, so that's the way it shows up. Like when I close, I can do it right now. I can close my eyes right now. And what I always get is like, it, it usually it sits diagonally until I start to play with it. Oh, this is interesting because we're talking about it. There's like a weird block around it too. Huh? Okay. So, but I can see it. So I get like a tether that looks like a quarter cable and then like a spinning wheel, a spinning disc. Right. And so like I, when I need to check in with myself and see where I'm at and see if there's intrusion into my field and stuff, I go looking for that. You know what I mean? And, and I know when there's something coming in or whatever, but like, you know, the, the way you know you're dealing with yourself is it's, it's tethered at both ends. If you have some loose flying around shit, I don't know. <laughs> um, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So and if, you, if you, you know, so that's my visual way of doing it. There's lots of different ways. Um, what's really interesting, what was really interesting to me is that when, um, while they were still in Egypt and just after they had done this, I was talking to Chris and Sheree and when they were explaining their, and they, they, we were supposed to have done a show by now, they will be back. They, they, they have a schedule and I have a schedule and things have been very crazy and whatever. But the way she was describing what they were doing in there, the thing she was describing is exactly what she was talking about it in terms of a tether and her, you know, her basically, her, her disc, her wheel, her, you know what I mean? And, and um, what she was describing that she saw there in the pyramid is exactly the same thing that I look at when I'm dancing and whatever. So are we dealing with some sort of um, metaphysical object that both exists mm -hmm. and doesn't exist kind of thing? And, you know, we were talking about it maybe as sort of the transcendental object at the end of time that Terrence McKenna used to talk about. And even though there's problems with a lot of his stuff and whatever, some of his ideas, there's something there. Maybe the way it eventually got twisted or spoken about, or maybe he was wrong in some of his ideas about it. But this transcendental object at the end of time or at the beginning of time, which are possibly the same place if they exist in the superposition of a strange loop. <laughs> <Right? laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So, um, and it's, it, it's able to generate um, energy, information, and intelligence in all directions and all forms and all sorts of different shapes in a torsion field and a cone and a you know what i mean all sorts of stuff um where did we start <laughs> yeah okay so in your opening uh monologue <laughs> you were talking about insecure systems and and you know Catherine austin fitz even though she's pan bitcoin she is very successful in this old paradigm mm -hmm. she's not she is right about how all of our systems are insecure mm -hmm. and you know uh, so are all of our technologies insecure in that and i'll get a little techy the nsa has uh in every computer chip intel amd arm all of them installed back doors um and that's called the meltdown inspector uh zero day vulnerabilities um so uh andrew is is looking at that going well shit at any time they can take down bitcoin how do i fix this and so he started nosing around and found out that the ascii chips that are on the bitcoin mining rigs don't the have aski a S C I A S C I. Okay. A S C I. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And his position is that if we didn't have those ASCII chips mining Bitcoin uh, and we had the other vulnerable chips, Bitcoin would be done. So he's, he considers Bitcoin secure. And so this is another cliff poke. So what he has done is he's taken a computer with all those back doors, but instead of booting the computer, and this is, we geeked out one day about what the fuck is bootstrapping? Right. Um, so instead I, of- I have a really cute pair of boots with a lot of straps on it. So <laughs> that's about all I know about bootstrapping. You know? <laughs> I mean, just folly back. When we started this, we came across that TLDR and we were like, oh my God, this is code. What the fuck is this? And it really means too long didn't read. But 
that's how <laughs> that's how much of noobs we were back in November. November. Right. Anyway, anyway, so Andrew has figured out how to boot a computer using the Bitcoin blockchain. It the security security of it into a running DOS uh, operating system and. So, I mean, Cliff could deep dive just on that. So that means, so, okay, let me see if I understand this. So what you're saying yeah. is because he's doing it with the DOS thing, that even if all of the other uh, thing, machines that, it, that it's booted through end up getting compromised because his is decentralized, then the uncompromised version exists on his operating system. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so he's booting, the, he's starting the computer using the Bitcoin blockchain because it knows it's secure, it knows its state, and then he's uh, running his DOS on it, from what I understand. So even though the hardware is So totally all the information that he pulls off of it is the original secure information. It's going on to his decentralized operating system. Now he's continuing to pull information off of the main Bitcoin thing. And so if that becomes compromised, then that's different. But everything that he's already pulled off because it's now on a decentralized operating system, that part is secure. I'm, I'm, am, I, am I completely misunderstanding this? Yeah, that's, that's what I gather. Now, okay. because Dios, Deos is quantum, mm -hmm. he keeps posting these little uh, isms about that uh, because it's quantum, it will know if somebody's trying to infiltrate it. Um, natively. So there's so many metaphysical quantum things going on in this that I can't even speak to it, but I'm trying to catch up. Um, uh, and I'll just say the reason why we're kind of indirectly talking about DeSantis is I've reached out many times. Hey, man, <laughs> will you come talk to us? And he just ignores. Um, but he doesn't ignore. And that's like, like well, he, yeah. he ignores. So so Andrew DeSantis, like when he first started, when when Jeff first started telling me about it, but I went and looked. And again, at that point, I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit about Bitcoin. But I'm like, okay, well, if I just pretend he's talking about something other than Bitcoin, this all is really cool. It makes a lot of sense to me, right? And so I was reading it. I was taking it in. And um, I had said like many months back, like almost a year ago now, like last August, the thing about uh, Westworld, Burning Man is Westworld, right? Mm -hmm. I'd said that on a little private podcast. But then back in like November, December, when all this was going on, I said it on Kristen Cherie's show. And then he tweeted it. And then in our group chat, so he tweeted that, that out like, what, maybe three days later? He tweeted mm -hmm. it out, right? And he, that Bitcoin was uh, Westworld, uh, Bitcoin, <laughs> Burning Man was Westworld. And he had a whole series of things about NPCs don't have Bitcoin. And it's, he went on and on and on about it. And then we had a group chat. I think it was, a, was it a Patreon group chat or was it in a deep immersion? I think it was a Patreon group chat where I talked about uh, I, the, the Bruce Lee quote, be like water, my friend. And then the very next day he tweeted that out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we are somehow quantumly entangled. And he's become also, if you follow his tweet storms, he's become increasingly, or at least publicly, increasingly uh, conspiratorial, increasingly mm -hmm. referring to um, esoteric topics, increasingly tweeting out some of the same. There's this great guy that we, Randy and I both like and follow on Twitter, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too, named Esoteric Exposal. Mm -hmm. Andrew started tweeting out some of that kind of stuff. He started really hitting some of the pedogate stuff really hard during the same period of time that we were talking about some of that stuff. So there is a level, you know, like, again, he comes from, and, and the, like, this is the part that's interesting. I haven't reached, I, you know, I haven't reached out to him yet. I have his email address. I have not reached out. I'm trying to decide what the best thing to do. He works at Stanford, you know what I mean? And so, which, you know, you know, we all know what Stanford Research Institute is and whatever. Okay, but so what? So like I come from UCLA and other people, you know what I mean? Like at a certain point, like the same people, like the people who are going to have the, when I say I come from UCLA, I mean in a much deeper sense than I just went there, although I did go there for a short period of time, but I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't graduate from there. And at some point I will make a video about the whole UCLA connection to things and whatever. But at some point, the people with, that are causing the problems and the people that have the solutions are going to come from the same place. So we shouldn't necessarily, ooh, you're bad because you're from there. You know what I mean? Like it is, I, I have noticed, I've observed um, this with people at Harvard and MIT, that the people doing the most evil work and the people doing the best work are coming from the same place. 
Mm. Right? They're coming from the same schools, from the same programs and whatever. And, you know, we are all, um, we have to, just like we were talking about earlier, stopping this something bad, something good thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we are all under a level of programming that we don't completely understand. Some of us are now aware that we are under programming. And so that opens up, you know, possibilities for us to understand something. But we, we still don't know. We're still not 100% clear on what it is, all that it entails, how much other people are aware of it. Are the people who are doing it even aware of it? Are they under programming, right? So like we have to, I mean, there are obviously people who do things that are not in the best interest of, you know, of humanity. And so we have to be very cautious of them and not be, you know, and not, you know, like obviously we know Bill Gates is not a good guy at this point. There's not a question right. about that, right? We know, but there's other people who like, you know, are doing things where you're like, some things that they're doing, you're like, oh, I'm really on board with that. Other things you're like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, they're just in a, they may just, I'm not saying I know for sure, but they may just be in a different place of understanding what it is they're coming from and what they've been affected by than, than, than we're at. And, and we can't just throw everything out. And so if DeSantis, you know, like I'm inclined based on the things that he expresses, to be very interested in Andrew DeSantis, but I also see in the things he expresses where we need to have some concerns and say, okay, we have to not, you know, we have to, he's dealing with the same shit that all the rest of us are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And that is, it is really difficult in this crazy world we live in. If, if, if what we're talking about about DNA is true, then like what we've been exposed to and what we've been manipulated by is beyond anything that we can, com can completely even comprehend. Mm -hmm. So we have to, um, you know, observe and and this is where i love sonia this is about expanding awareness and not this good this bad if you guys follow sonia on facebook and whatnot she she posts every day it's articles that seem sort of like mainstream and just regular sciencey and and like why is she doing that she seems much more fringe why isn't she talking about super fringe stuff she's doing it because this is science now doing and saying things that she was saying 10 12 15 years ago right and so you know, and even if they have some funky agenda attached to it, just the fact that it's being talked about means that the possibility exists, right? And so we have to, like, we have to stop um, responding to, like, the, te the, the uh, temptation of, like, classifying everything immediately as bad, good, um, part of the agenda, not part of the agenda. I'm starting to recognize that the thing that is the agenda looks so close to the thing that is not the agenda. Mm. That, like it's, you know what I mean? They're not these two widely, widely different things. They want us to think that they are. So we're like constantly swinging from pole to pole, but they're not, they're very close. Like, you know what I mean? And, 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 and sometimes both things exist within the same person, within the same idea. Distraction is the same thing as the opportunity. So, yes. you know what I mean? Like it, it requires one to be, constantly observing aware working on it and not just going getting frustrated and throwing it all away like you know this is this is what life is about it is hard to parse out what is necessary from what is not what is important from what is not and it isn't just that like okay there's one thing i don't like about this let's push it over here but it's such our temptation to do that and i think that is the crux of our programming is to get us to really be either or when the answer is both and and something yeah. else, you know, both and, 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 and 10 more things. And you know what I mean? And a hundred varieties on those 10 more things. And, you know, and that is the array of mechanized DNA strands. Everything is a possibility. There's a slightly different version that exists on each one. You yep. know what I mean? And, and you don't, it's like choose your own adventure books. Like you have to choose one for now, but that doesn't mean you can't ever go back and try the other one. And so we don't have to throw it away just because it wasn't the one we chose now kind of thing, you know? Yeah, it's so much about context. I mean, um, when you have people that are being a vic in a circumstance of being a victim, um, it's all about context. Of course, it's human nature to want to help them. But you, sometimes you have to step back and go, wait a minute, is this universe letting them experience what they have done to another? Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot be judge and jury about this. And, um, you know, uh, it's the, the context of things, you know, uh, having the last name of Gates being in the IT industry always on telecom com conferences or what, what not. Oh, are you related to Bill Gates? And, you know, every time I have to say, fuck no. And, and I was in reaction mode back in that time. But 
um, but now looking at it, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I don't know the context of his reality or the bigger reality. I don't know what he thinks is going on. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to be judge and jury of that anymore. Yeah. So um, there's all these. <laughs> it's so funny you say it. Like at a certain point, like, like, when, when you and I started going beyond just surface level interaction with each other through silly messages about tennis and Bitcoin and whatever, like I had the, I had the thought for a second. I was like, this is some Bill Gates shit being sent at me. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, like, right? like I, I had that thought, but then, you know, the more I got to say, I was like, well, even if it's that, I don't care. You know what right. I mean? Because the, the level, the, whatever is being generated by our interaction is of more interest. And obviously at a certain point I came to know you in a way that like, you know, right. whatever, but like, I think that's the whole, like, in, that's the whole thing. And, and I agree with you. Like, I see Bill Gates at this point as not having the best interest in humanity in, 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 in his mind. So I don't, I, I reject his programming. I reject what he's trying to do. But I, I also, there's that very, very, very tiny part of me that has a level of compassion because we don't know what he is coming from. His parents were obviously involved in, in you know, eugenics and things like that. So like, this is his programming. I mean, there is that mm. possibility that he thinks somehow he's doing the right thing and that doesn't make it okay. But like, how do we, um, we've all done some crazy shit thinking that it was the right thing to do. Now yeah. this is obviously accelerated on a level. We can't let it be affecting humanity. And the, my, my big problem, like the big problem for me with him is that like, uh, and this goes for people like George Soros and whatever too, is that they have the power to affect so many mm -hmm. because of their position. Like, you know, like otherwise just their ideas would just be ideas. I just don't want to have to hear their names. Like, I don't like that their, that their reality becomes part of my reality just because they are so big and have so much. And so I think that's, that, that, that's, that's my issue with it. But yeah, I mean, it's a hard situation. Like even the, even the, even the, the like biggest demon has something charming about them, right? And vice versa. And yep. even the most charming person, the person who you love the most, you think is just the best person in the world has like that one thing where you're like, holy fuck, I'm going to kill you. You know what I mean? Like this is super, why do you do that? So it's just, it's, it is. And so back to circle this back to Andrew, yep. you know, like I don't, you know, um, I hope that some sort of meeting a discussion or chat or interview, or he seems to really not do very many, he seems to do them with just one or two specific mm -hmm. people, but I'm hoping at some point, either um, when we can or when we will, we do, you know what I mean? Um, have a conversation. And there's so many, um, and this is where, like, I feel like, and Jeff and I were talking about this yesterday, when I was in the car, was it yesterday? Or when I was running or something, that there are so many interesting, what we're really talking about here, if you just think about, all the things we've talked about in this conversation. Can you imagine the, uh, in kind of, if everyone could sort of put their narrative aside, right? Mm -hmm. and, and some people, some of these people don't necessarily have narratives. So those of you who don't have narratives, like I'm excusing you from that. Can you imagine the kind of discussion that could be had, the kind of, if you could have Andrew DeSantis and Cliff and Catherine and Sonia and Bruce, Bruce Lipton with That's his true. epigenetics and, you know what I mean? And, and, and I'm, I'm leaving others out who have or someone like a Raz Ben or someone like a Seven Book. If we all just came and just talked and tossed ideas around and not, we're, we're not committed to like one particular narrative. If, if, I mean, if, if, if Andrew and Bruce could have a conversation about the epigenetics of Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. <laughs> right? yep. the epigenetic, or, or, or or Robert Phoenix uh, does the chart on the Genesis block of Bitcoin and what is up with that uh, in 2000. We should have him do Andrew DeSantis too. We well, I don't know do his Andrew. birthday. I know the, I know the date Robert of the Genesis block. Um, so, I mean, there's so many strings you could pull, yep. but I'm, uh, I'm just an, uh, reiterating, I'm just not uh, tied to this money monster bitcoin is a, a ledger of transaction thing there is way more to this well have you ever have you ever seen that video of um like some some uh, rabbi talking about gematria the kabbalistic gematria and how basically that the okay so gematria is the we know people who had zachary hubbard and his he does a much more sort of crude, oh. although effective version of talking about gematria, right? Like it, it's a practice of coding numbers into words, but the point is to execute the code of the number. And this guy was basically saying that by 
this rabbi was basically, I'll have to see if I can find it, that when you say certain words or certain numbers, that makes certain things happen, mm. right? So what is, are, have they, is the reality being programmed by this right. ledger or these codes or these hashtag, these hashtag, hash, hash codes or not even hashtags, although we'll get to that too because there's right. some <laughs> by hashtags. Yep. Uh, but, uh, you know, is it, is simply, are, are we, is reality being coded? Are we in the, are, we're in the, I mean, we are out of the simulation. We are in the supercomputer. Is that what this is? Is this is like, you know, things are changing so quickly, like people have no attention span. Is it just people are, you know, typing numbers into these machines and that is quite literally re-editing the film that is the story of our reality, you know? Right. Okay, so uh, that, let's go back to the insecure systems and, and being confused. Has, has this Bitcoin blockchain been manifested at this time because our DNA is so attacked and insecure and our financial technology systems are so insecure and there's that third force out there playing with time and CERN and everything's just so insecure that universe said, wait a minute, we need something to help us this is duality, so you can uh, think of it as two ways. The, the Bitcoin blockchain, if it is truly open source, decentralized, transparent, is it, and secure, if it is that, I, I don't know that it is, but if it is that, is that the anchor that everything per DeSantis's view can start attaching to and re-secure everything in, in you know, succession? And I think that's where he's going. Um, uh, you know, I, I've been at this for, <laughs> for freaking six months. Sometimes I freak out and have to do deep breaths like, oh, my God, he's going totally AI. And then I circle back and go, oh, wait a minute. This is very organic if you look at it through the lens of what human DNA is. And if you could secure that back or if you could understand this construct and the magical intelligence or the technology that is it, um, you can un unfuck what's going on. Um, it's kind of like, I, and I, and I don't even know if I can like say, uh, get the language right for this, but like I have talked about, and, and I think Sonia's probably talked about in a much more intellectual and, and, and clear way that like, the everything our atmosphere our environment is aware like every time we breathe out it is recording information about us every time we breathe in we are taking information about it is this somehow so like is is, is that sort of like in some ways what the true like akashic record is right like i've had the experience where um when listening to techno music i receive information about the history of the music right mm -hmm. so is it somehow encoded in what it is and so is it just aside from there being these hashtags and ledgers that exist, is just the process of doing this, of building this, this uh, open source, you know, secure, whatever kind of thing. Is it like almost, is it the way it's being done? Is it helping to reality record the true version of what happened? Is it, is it, is it, is it storing it in the more the, 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 like energetic or the morphogenic field? If we're in a simulation, then just doing this, it, it, and the same with the DNA. If, if the DNA of all of our ancestors are in, is in our bodies, Mm -hmm. Is that what's happening here? Is it making it so that we can access the truth about what is going on at any time kind of thing? I, I did, I'm doing a poor job of, of, of sort of of stating nope. and explaining that. But I also, what, what is fascinating to me and, and, and about it is that when he talks about this, he also usually within hours or days of when he makes one of these really AIE kinds of things that you're talking about, he also goes on a, pe a pedo rant. <laughs> He does. And, and these things are inextricably tied. And is that like, is this, I mean, is it, I mean, we even, when we were talking about, I mean, at one point, Danny had the thought and the idea that like, is the uh, uh, cryptocurrency backed by, you know, child trafficking, oh. by, right? Mm -hmm. So like, is this somehow like, I don't, I'm not even sure what I'm trying to connect here, but like these things seem to come up together you know what I mean? It's sort of like, do you see what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, but okay. see, we, we are in a duality. So both and are correct. Yeah. Uh, universe 
manifested this at this time. Now, DeSantis went on a big tweet storm about how uh, Bitcoin's been around many times in our history mm -hmm. through through word forms, but it's it's essentially the same thing. And and his take is it, it was to balance and imbalance at that time, and mm -hmm. then we move forward. So is this is this a structure to anchor to again and and get the I like Chris and Gio's uh, Chris Gio's uh, saying or you know when he said uh, the construct isn't infected we are infected. Yeah. And and that aligns up with DeSantis' meme. They uh, told me that, that we have an infection in our heart. And that made a lot of sense to me um, when I, like, uh, really um, got it. When I, when I really got it, like, when I really started making significant changes in my life, all the other, like, you know, the ones that have really made a difference. And I, it's 11-11, right, when I'm saying this. And that's a good confirmation for me. I recognized that there was something wrong with my heart. Something had been done to my heart to not recognize right from wrong, even though I was like sort of like a fairly on the outside, seemingly moral good person and whatever, like the problem is when you're not honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. right? And the people think the problem is when you're not honest with other people, but that's just like a symptom of not being, you, you know, it's not really hard to lie to someone else, right? If you're lying to yourself, it's not, it's not about the other person. And so that is, we've all been infected with, a, you know, with some sort of thing that makes us not able to or not or not or feel we are unable to be honest with ourselves about who we are therefore unable to be honest with each other about who and what we are and that creates this infection that just multiplies like ebola yes and and i just posted that on facebook and i it was from one of desantis's buddies it was uh people only have to fear lies about their selves mm -hmm. something like that um and these groups out there that are just like open your heart well to i look when i see that group saying that i'm like well you they want you to open your firewall and let more of this lie mm -hmm. shit come in and i i'm just not that's not my reality no you have uh, to clean and clear your heart and then yeah. you have to be really careful about who and what you let into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's important to, cons you know, to, to consult with both your brain and your heart when doing things and making decisions and whatever, but this just like wide open. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 No, 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 no. Um, so there's so many parts and pieces to this Dios and, and what he's up to. And the, the most interesting thing is, and this is the third cliff poke, um, you know, Cliff has the web bots and he must have known way back when that the chips were infected and he's, he's dealt with that. Um, but the end result of his web bots, but now they seem to be manipulated in a way that, uh, and he said this on shows that stuff, it just isn't accurate. Has he fixed that with this last report? I don't know. We're starting to see some things that he's getting right. That's interesting. But then there's DeSantis with Deos, that he is now aligned with Jack at Twitter, and he's using Twitter because it has exponentially uh, amounts of data and nodes that he's – from what his cryptic tweets are, it's like he he just tweeted this morning, hey, I already knew about the one pedo star, and I can't, um, he was on House of Cards, Kevin Spacey. Mm -hmm. I knew this, that would happen months before it happened. So mm -hmm. he, he's alluding that he's using the Twitter and the, the uh, what does Cliff call it, your psychic leaks um so he's using twitter in some way in in that quantum he calls it a memris memory memrister where he memoizes all the tweets and then he memorizes the uh the what's high frequent the uh code to to figure it out man this, this so, gets so well, deep, I get lost. But the interesting thing about Twitter, and this, it, 
I say this more than some of the other social media platforms is when something happens, you can very quickly go back and find the evidence for it. So like the whole thing with Anthony Bourdain, right? He's mm -hmm. suicides and you go back just a little bit and he's talking about being bothered by black cube and Hillary's goons and Harvey Weinstein's goons and this, that, and the other thing. So like there, you know, and if people sort of know what they're looking for, they can pick up on that when it happens. You know what I mean? Like it, 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 you don't have to wait for things to become a big story. The answers are there. Twitter is, Twitter is becoming the social DNA. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's, Ooh, and, that's in, that might be why he's so interested in it. Right. Yes. Yeah. So the, 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 the blockchain is the, is the DNA. Uh, okay. So I wonder, if, okay. So I wonder if he, it's he, the base chain. It's the base. Yeah. And Twitter is a drive or side chain. Side chain. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is Andrew has created a web bot out of this Twitter side chain. And today he just tweeted, well, I wonder how long it's going to take for them to nail Almir to the pedo stuff. So Almir just got, he was the Clinton guy that ran the mail server or whatever. Mm -hmm. All over Zero Hedge, the Department of Justice just gave him a pass. Um, so it'll be interesting if that plays out. Andrew has also said July 21st, he's going to... Hmm, release something or turn something on or it's just interesting are you talking about Al almir are you are you talking about the imran at one thing did you mean imran yes. Iwan? okay i was like who the hell is almir yeah they're, they're basically what i i don't have time to look at stuff but something just popped up and it was saying how the doj has charged him with bank fraud but can't charge him with any previous crimes or whatever so this is the way so they're, like they're busting him but they're not gonna he won't be ever have to talk about any of the other shit that was on the computers or the pedo stuff or the briberies or any of that. okay i got you i was like out here imran iwan george webb kind of stuff okay yeah yeah he had full the full uh hard drives of wiener's laptop and you know, just crazy videos. Okay, and just since you mentioned it, guys, if you need any further evidence that we are living in a simulation, then that Anthony Weiner, right, that, the, the guy, someone who does what Anthony Weiner does, his name is Weiner. Like he was hard coded to do that shit, right? right, right. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that should be like, you know, first line of evidence. Yeah. Anthony, right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's aspects of this, um, you know, time uh the blockchain time unix time bitcoin time uh cliff's little bloop theory i don't even know where you could go with that um but uh well think, the most interesting thing to me about cliff's little bloop theory right and i'm neither on board nor not on board with cliff's little bloop theory but it's something interesting to think about if reality is blinking in and out of existence as many million times a second as he says it is, um, then if there's something that sits outside of that, can they rearrange all the deck chairs while it's turned off, mm -hmm. right? So like if, if that, if only, if only those of us who are in it are exposed to time and those on the outside are not, then every time it's turned off, can they rearrange reality and put it back in, right? And mm -hmm. put it back and put it back and put it back. And is that how, you know, is that how some of this stuff is happening? And how, is that how, um, to me, that's the part that's most interesting is what's happening in those moments where it's turned off, right? Yeah. Like you go to the theater and they, 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 they turn off the lights for a second while they're rearranging the stage furniture and then they turn it back on and you're in a different room and you're in a different place and you're in a different time. Yep. Is that what's happening? Yep. So when I was looking at that, uh, you know, they say the Bitcoin blockchain ledger itself is immutable. It can't be changed once it's written. And I, I'm related that to DNA and, you know, the modality I know where you can replay, re, replay attack time events in your DNA. So the Bitcoin blockchain is tied to, what is it? Uh, Unix time, which is crystalline, a crystalline computer mm -hmm. chip. I mean, uh, Everything about it, even though it could be an anchor to uh, secure things back to the way they should be or whatever, at our level of awareness, we, we have root access to time, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So with our awareness, there's 
parts and pieces to this that are nothing to be scared of as far as everything that you've ever done is is uh, recorded in the blockchain. Well, I can just undo that if if it's my if I created that. I think uh, Steve Richards has the it's part of lore. Only the creator can change their creation. So if I've created something on the blockchain or in my DNA record, I can change it. Um, no, it's not immutable. So there's a whole layer to that. Uh, well, that, that also goes into Bruce Lipton's theory with the epigenetics, right? Like yes. he is not saying that about the creator, but what he's saying is like the thing, your gene, rather than being, it's like a whole book like, or a whole library and you can choose. So there's these, all of the options and you can sort of choose which page, right? Mm. Like you have, you know, like, and so, you know, if you choose the page where you're, where you get the family genetic line down of cancer, then that's the one you choose. But there's like a hundred other pages in that book that don't have that possibility. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like in, it also an array. Um, so it, it's a similar kind of concept. Like, you know, just because your DNA has the book doesn't mean that that has to be the page you select to read. Yep. Which, you know, and so you have the ability. And even if you've read that page, you can be like, you know what? I'm bored of that page. I like this other page better. And, you know, I actually don't even like this book. I'm going to switch to another book that's on the other <laughs> side of the library. Uh, yep. So. Yep. So just like our DNA, uh, we are, we can be outside of time. Yeah. We're learning that we're, we're going down that awareness uh, journey um, to actually physically manifest that at will. But I see. I see DNA as like a time travel device, meaning like so. I see the DNA as being able to function inside or outside of time and inside or outside of space. It's like a holographic spaceship, like yes. a time, you know what I mean, or whatever. Like a holographic. I think of it as like a time travel device, as a portal, as a stargate, or something like that. Something to sort of. Um, you know, to move, to, to, to use, to move through. Yeah. So Andrew, uh, in a couple of tweets, he's like, um, so if you put value in your private address on the blockchain, it is reflected over there. So he clearly knows there's something over there that's outside of space and time. Mm -hmm. um, but he did, he won't go into detail. So there's something about, time being outside of time that might be related to why okay clearly our dna and our cells can scale scale to a level that we just can't even comprehend and this whole little meme that bit the block bitcoin blockchain hasn't scaled yet well is that the missing piece that we if they could relate it back to how our bodies are made and dna and all this other stuff maybe the blockchain can scale, but it's just too soon. There, there's a thread to pull there, but I don't know how to go. Yeah. Um, it's just like maybe that's the banking account for outside of time. Like this banking account here, so the money system is so predicated on time here and our DNA is so t inherently tied to our physical bodies here that maybe where he is traveling in and out from, maybe there is no um, time and no body over there. There is your con you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know if the DNA necessarily, like the DNA is like coding the body here, but is all that information like being directed by our consciousness outside of time and the DNA is what's being used like the computer chip to sort of generate it and to, to sort of program the body. Yeah, I don't, that, I'm using bad language there, but. Um, no, 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 but that, that relates to his tweet about uh, you are the computer, Bitcoin is the organism. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, and then so and then the same goes like with the uh, if the va value you're adding to your Bitcoin address is reflected over there, like is that um, so like maybe yeah, so is he talking about like okay so like you need you need money over there too, right? And the money from here you can't take over there, but Bitcoin is inter that the cryptocurrency is sort of inter interdimensional. It's five D. It can be that's the only bank account you'll be able to access when you're in the 5D world. And it's not, you know what I mean? A and um, you're gonna have to learn how to access your, 
information body, maybe without your physical body over there too. And the DNA is sort of the transporter for that. Okay, you, I wanted you to finish because you all, you're, you're close to hitting on it. He, I have a page of sentences taken out of all three of his videos because he's really uh, clear about what value is and mm -hmm. it's not money. No, it's not it, money. It's data that is created by surprise. So, you know, on my Facebook, uh, I always, well, I sometimes relate to, wait a minute, this is my spirit's adventure. My spirit came into this body to have an adventure. And adventures are full of surprise because it adds value to your, your experience. Mm -hmm. You can go through this life in default mode and just be reacting to external stimulus. So you're in essence an NPC, or you can actually go on an adventure and do things out of surprise. And he calls that white noise, like being in nature, there's so much white noise around you, you end up having really good thoughts and creative stuff. And that's, that's valuable. Or even in stressful situations in the city or wars or whatever, there's so much white noise around that there's so much surprise created that those are kind of valuable experiences too. Now, if you're doing wrong, that kind of gets stored in your DNA blockchain as, oh, I did something wrong. It, yeah, it was surprise, but you got to experience your own creation of whatever you did wrong. So that's why maybe down the track, you are a victim of that scenario. So there's that back and forth. Um, but I really like his take on, uh, you know, what value is and to think yeah. differently. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, maybe, you know, maybe when Randy's back, we'll sometime we'll just do like a little segment where we go through some of the sentences and each of us have our, have our turn at trying to sort of deconstruct them. Yeah. Um, let's kind of wrap up this hour and then we'll go over and do a short segment for the patrons. So we've been, uh, I don't know exactly what we've been doing here for about an hour, <laughs> but it was kind of interesting. And uh, we're going to come a little bit back to the more real world reality of what's going on inside this uh, whatever the fuck this is, <laughs> when we get back on the other side. Um, so yeah, so for those of you who are checking out now, we'll catch you later. And for the patrons, we'll see you on the other side. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't, 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 don't,